Dear friends, I suggest we start our discussion. It is called New Mega Projects of Moscow. Skolkovo is about all of this. We are new, we are mega, and we are in Moscow. We became a part of this megalopolis. Very good atmosphere at this table because everyone loves Skolkovo. Don, who works in this project since its foundation, Elena Zelensova, who joined us, and even Sergei Kuznetsov, who, who is also main architect of the city of Moscow, but his main work is the being the chair of the Council of the Skolko Foundation. Anthony Mallows also He's the one creating the same project in Abu Dhabi, so he's very positive uh, about our achievements and failures. So, Sergey, I hope you'll be um, an op opponent to us and will tell us the truth about our failures. So, can you please put the presentation of Anton? who will give us the uh, well basics for critics and for further discussion. Thank you very much, dear friends and dear colleagues. I understand that the format of the presentation is not the best one for this round table, but we decided that it's necessary not only tell you uh, like what we're doing with words, but also to, exp to demonstrate you some pictures. like. Uh, for you to get some visual understanding of what is going on. I don't want to spend much time on explaining you why Skolkovo is about innovation, um, why from the very beginning we decided that the city itself should become our sixth cluster. I mean, the city has to contribute into the ecosystem on a platform of innov innovative Skolkova Center. For everyone who is not that well aware with our project, I would like to remind that uh, in a target model, uh, Skolkova is a project that uh, will, will overarch 25,000 our residents working on our territory. We will have up to 30,000 people like coming from time to time from time to time so starting from 2020 we expect about 50,000 people uh, on, on a certain level involved in everyday life of Skolkovo and it's all turning around our fain, uh, five main spheres of research our five clusters it's space nuclear technologies energy efficiency biomed and of course IT uh, well, what about urban construction, urban planning? It's also about two main cores. One of them is Skoltech. Skoltech is a project that uh, is being made together with our partners from MIT. We all know that MIT is the leader in the leading university in technological sphere. And well, um, besides Skoltech, we also have Techno Park. My colleague of mine is here. He is uh, waiting for us to give him uh, one of the buildings. So he could start working with one of our cores that we, the way we imagined it, it five years ago. Uh, quite often people say that, yes, we understand what Skolkovo is about, but we do not really have any information. Uh, 400 hectares of land that we have right now for five years already, and we plan to use this land to build about two and a half million square meters of every type of, you know, property, starting from, you know, households up to industrial uh, property. It's uh, you see the diagram, and well, it's um, uh, financed with different instruments like subsidiary schemes. Um, the, for example, the money that's uh, spent for some engineering systems. For example, my colleague here, Yelena Zelenkova, starts to work is working in this sphere and. Um, well, five uh, 
half of uh, 500,000 is used for this engineering networks and logistics, and the other 2 million square meters are used to build the whole Skolkova city. We, as master developers of this project, are, well, uh, we are we stick to the original plan that was there five years ago. Uh, here at this table, uh, there are architects and urban, uh, you know, uh, planning specialists. So I guess uh, we would like to listen to their opinion about Skolkova project. I guess it might be different from my developer's opinion. But uh, at the very end of international tender organized by the foundation, tender that included 36 companies from all over the world, at the end of it, we uh, found two main ideologies. The first was presented by IMA company, one of uh, three Pulitzer laureates that uh, directly contributed to the creation of Skolkova project. Uh, IMA um, suggested the idea of the hero city, which is uh, very close to all of us. Many of us understand that um, a huge number of industrial cities were built on the concept of hero city, like um, one part was designated for production for industry, for industry. The second part was dedicated to living. That was quite a, a good idea, but it was not suitable for re a realization of the target that we set for ourselves. The, it, the target was about the creation the, uh, of a comfortable environment, the environment for some creative you know, uh, activities. So another concept of French company IREP was the one that won. Um, that concept was about the utopia of the city garden, garden city. The concept, it, this winning concept is the one that we are now trying to implement. So what did we manage to achieve already from the huge number of participants with this very small amount of time? We uh, managed to produce the master plan and the design project and by the way, the design project was made by the dream team of architects that we managed together some years ago. I told you already about three Plitzker laureates speech. Um, at that time, uh, together with the um, well, managers, uh, Sergei Kuznetsov, Yuri Gregoran with Stefano Boyi, uh, these people helped us not only to you know, bring together the city, but also to uh, manage, you know, the process of simultaneous designing and simultaneous construction, which does not happen that often. Uh, I mean, with, or rather, which is not that often uh, turns out to be successful. And I uh, might say that our experiment turned out to be quite successful in this sense. Very briefly, our city is comprised of like almost equal three parts, if we're uh, judging by its functionality. One third is office and research infrastructure, about one third our social and household infrastructure, and uh, the third, third is transport, event infrastructure, and all the rest. From the very beginning, we want it to be the city, despite the fact that it's only two and a half million square meters and only about 50,000 people are using this target model. We decided that we, uh, from the very beginning, we wanted to be self-sufficient. We, from the very beginning, thought that the infrastructure that um, that we will require has to be independent so because any contractor will never be able to provide us with everything that we needed we had quite interesting experiments with uh, key objects but well at that time we were rather naive to believe that that dream team of architects um, was the one to make these key objects. And we were quite serious about giving them all the way, you know, the green light to build everything. Um, this cupola was made by Kazura, Kazura Sejima, the second woman who got the Pulitzer Prize Award. Uh, uh, the, that square thing is the creature of Om, this very, uh, 
a specific object that I was dreaming about for a long time, but I never got the understanding of how to actually do that. But at a certain point of time, we understood that these giant objects are actually not about the I are not really relevant to our original idea of comfortable environment, right? And we thought about, you know, going back to the original idea of comfortable environment. I mean, the idea that it uh, brings daily comfort. And this is how we remade our cupola. It was transformed into very, you know, um, um, efficient objects that gathered uh, the place for all the events, that gathers all the event infrastructure. And that another huge thing uh, is uh, being transformed into the long road that uh, would lead um, or every people arriving from the Belarus Belaruski railway station to our techno park, this road of 1,400 meters uh, became uh, will become, you know, the uh, the symbol of that uh, controlled, comfortable system. This is our render, our target model. Um, this is how Skolkova looks like. So this is the this is what we have. Uh, we still uh, have a lot of work to do till 2020, and we received many questions from our colleagues, from our foreign and domestic colleagues, and they always um, ask us, why do you do these things your way, not another way? And well, these forums, as this urban forum, is always very interesting platform for me because it's a chance to debate, to discuss, to explain our opinions and our motivation, and sometimes uh, well, of course, I understand that something could be done better, and I would like to hear from you whether something uh, could be improved. I won't really... I don't want to usurp the, you know, the five minutes that I've, I was given, uh, and I don't want to bother you with more slides. Alexander, if I may, um, Sergei Kuznetsov will tell everything uh, better that I can. So the environment that we create, and I'm talking as a developer, the environment that we create makes our partners think in a correct direction, right? We've uh, been debating a lot about the presence of Sberbank on the territories of Technopark Skolkovo. We had difficult relationships with the administration of management of Sberbank. They uh, thought that uh, they should be effective, uh, well, uh, e economically effective in our on our territories. They they wanted to create some, you know, very efficient objects that would be um, economically well meaningful for them. But well, the solution was brilliant, and I, uh, being a person who is a part of this project, uh, am very proud and happy about this. And well, Alexander, if I may, I would like to give the floor to Sergey to tell about this Berbank. Um, well, solution. Uh, of course, I will give the floor to Sergey, but I have one thing to add to uh, something th to the story that Anton told. You participated very actively um, in the creation of the project uh, at the very beginning of it, right? But then you became the, like the main architect of Moscow. Uh, did this, you know, switch in your job uh, change your relation towards the project? Uh, probably you saw something uh, not that evident that you haven't seen before. Well, our relationship hasn't changed and our attitude hasn't changed. And even the experience that we gathered on this project and the things that we invented and then that we defended are now being implemented and are now uh, Moscow's experience uh, because I've been doing both things and the principle of uh, transition from master planning to objects, this principle of uh, uh, very strict phasing of the project. This is from where uh, the quality of architecture springs. Uh, today at another panel, everyone uh, would agree that the procedure and uh, the right, correct phasing of the project is the, you know, the precondition of the architecture quality. I think that this is an example, a great example 
and I'm very positive about this project and I think that this is a, uh, an example that we can be proud of, that we can show to others to, to learn from. Anton sen said that Sberbank is an uh, example of a correct client's attitude uh, because first they have this very utilitarian approach, uh, you know, typical solutions um, which are, you know, cheaper and maybe quicker but then they transitioned, they believed uh, that the environment that we create for, for work for, and the quality of work that will take place there, uh, it, they are somehow related and that the environment affects what happens when inside it. And we know from architecture that it is a management of life. Uh, there is a great number of books about how architecture affects uh, uh, the mental state, uh, productivity, creativity, of uh, individuals and then we, uh, there was a decision made to hold an international competition. Uh, Zaha Hadid's office won the competition, not Zaha herself, she passed away unfortunately two weeks before the presentation of the project. However, she herself personally uh, was dealing with the project. She finished it and then after finishing the project she passed away very suddenly. But it is not a memoriam for her, but uh, I can say that this w was a great project in competition uh, with many other leading architectural bureaus, so her uh, project won. And I think it's a great example of how uh, correct actions lead to correct results, even if this result uh, was planned a little bit differently on the initial stages. Right now, I can say that mm, that right now we understand that the quality of procedures and of decision making, constant workshops, discussions, and uh, n uh, these decisions being uh, weighed carefully uh, and not being not uh, chaotic, this all leads to a very high quality result. And many of the other competitions uh, that we hold, uh, we also apply these principles. Of course, there are bumps in the road, there are troubles. Sometimes we have to depart from what we initially planned, and I keep repeating it, that you know, if you build the work process correctly, it will inevitably provide uh, y yield uh, great results. So you sh we shouldn't be fetishizing none of the elements, you see, uh, none of the stages. We even held an exhibition in the architecture institutes uh, about, uh, you know, outstanding architectural objects of uh, uh, Soviet architecture, uh, seriously, those are 90 percent seriously reworked uh, architectural uh, objects. A great example of working with architects, with planning, with phasing, and with uh, carefully weighing uh, the every stage of implementation from the idea to the material. Now, as the moderator, I will uh, suggest you to have the next urban forum at Skolkova. You say that not only we should not only be talking, we should, you know, be showing in examples and I hope that by the next summer the real physical picture will be mu very much more similar to the to this three D rendering in terms of non arch architecture and people living and working there. We will have lots of things to show you. Well, if we would hold this forum annually, we will see, you know, how how the situation evolves. Now, Anthony Miles, please. Uh, set of decisions, uh, mistakes, and uh, challenges uh, running your uh, innovation, your Skolkova, uh, Middle East Skolkova, I would call it. Uh, what are the similarities? What are the things you would like to suggest or you would like to grab from us? Alexander, thank you. The similarities are remarkable. And the comments that Anton and Sergei have made also about what I call the journey. So I have a few comments to make on what the parallels are. In a sense, Skolkovo and Mazda City, at their inception, set out to do the impossible. 
which is to bring together the future in a place that has a robust life as it evolves. And the parallel from the beginning has to do with design and with great architects. As Anton mentioned, this dream team of architects that Skolkovo put together to image what Skolkovo will be in the future was exactly what we did at Mazda City. Ten years ago, when the leadership in Abu Dhabi said, we need to diversify the UAE economy away from oil and gas and government jobs for Emiratis. And that diversification of the economy was to be done through Mazda. And the key physical component of Mazda was Mazda City. The size is almost the same. We're 600 hectares, you're 400 hectares. But your 400 hectares is used in some ways more efficiently. The population, the total built out area, they're very, very similar in size. And my comment on that is when you set out to do the future, which is in fact a journey that some of you have an idea, it's very important to image the object. It's very important to have the world's best designers give your audience, your stakeholders, an image of the future. But my comment, as I'm hearing around the table today, is also that image of the future needs to transform itself from an object which people can very easily associate with to a process which brings people together rather than fantastic buildings. The other parallel is one that is a shift away from things to people. What we understand about innovation and innovation uh, centers of innovation is though they might start off with being great places, either imagined or real, like Silicon Valley. Silicon Valley comes together in large part because of lifestyle, but it's also work style. And so creating that is about people. It's not about buildings and objects. So the reality is we still have to be profitable. And as Anton pointed out, half our life, my life and his life, is about a real estate development that makes money. But it doesn't make money without people with ideas. So you have to invent both processes, relationships, and how to do that. The one thing I think we are different is, and I'd like to hear more, is that the leadership in Abu, Abu Dhabi said they would give us two business advantages globally. They, by Emirati decree, formed a free zone. So from a global business perspective, Mazda City is a free zone for global businesses to establish and innovate and create new enterprises. But that doesn't work unless global capital can be repatriated, can be syndicated, and can be um, sold on. So the second innovative thing the leadership in Abu Dhabi did was to create an investment zone. Now different perhaps to Moscow and Skolkovo is the fact that in the UAE, foreign companies who wish to work globally need to locate in free zones. So we created a network of free zones of which Mazda City is the tech-focused one. In Abu Dhabi there's media, there's logistics, and there's finance as well, and we compete with Dubai. The idea of holding this Moscow Urban Forum at Skolkovo next year is an excellent idea. Because one of the things we do is we team with what's called the World Future Energy Summit, which is the Abu Dhabi Sustainability Week, which is hosted by Mazda, my parent company, where, depending on which year, between 30 and 35,000 people come together for a week to discuss 
sustainability and to showcase sustainability globally. So I would argue, perhaps um, with a little bit of dissent from the mayor of Moscow, that the locus and location for such an innovation should be in fact Skolkovo, not in the heart of Moscow. But put that point aside, because our World Future Energy Summit is in fact not held at Mazdar City, it's actually held downtown, very similar today. I want to make one other comment, which is about um, what's happening with innovation. Innovation is global, it's not local. And it has to do with the younger generation. Unless you can make the barriers to entry for young startups, for people anywhere in the world to want to come to Skolkovo or to Mazdar City to push their ideas, you have to have, in fact, an open immigration policy that allows young minds from anywhere, from Africa, from Indonesia, from other parts of Russia, to come in and work easily and start up. Because young people need the next generation of innovators has one demographic challenge. It's people like me keeping on working and therefore capping the job opportunities for the younger generation. So if we can invent mechanisms for the young people to find ways to start up, to, to develop new ideas, that's where you need this matching of young and old. Young people with ideas and old corporations that have a global reach and making that connection. Places like Skolkovo and like Mazda City are in fact the right location. And then last comment on the similarities. I'm absolutely amazed at the idea of research and innovation and how you do that with institutes of higher education. Because your partnering with MIT is exactly what we did. We partnered with MIT in the creation of Mazda Institute. And I found it a little bit freaky this morning to hear you have five sectors in your research, which is exactly what Mazda Institute has, although they're slightly different. Because our focus is on sustainability, I think you have a broader, more comprehensive focus of what innovation means. So that's some opening comments. Thank you, Anthony. Just to that uh, comment, we agreed that uh, hopefully by the end we'll uh, come to an agreement of cooperation between two uh, sister ships. Uh, Skolkov and Mazdara, and I hope it happens uh, by the Open Innovation uh, Forum. Thank you. I would like nothing better than that. <laughs> okay. No, nas город the город. Well, the city, the well, the notion and the city is all very good, but there will be people living there, and we have to, uh, like consumers of urban services. Uh, Renat here. Well, okay, marketing has two main parts, the, hey, two, has two notions, the man who entered the store and the man who bought something in the store, right? Uh, well, it's quite easy to make a person enter, but it's not that easy to make the person buy something. So Renat and Elena here are the ones responsible for making people enter our Skolkova store, and Elena is the one responsible for making them buy something. and. The, not choosing any other store. Please, Renat. I had a presentation, but whatever. I don't really need it. Well, but it's still there. OK. Well, bees, honey, startups, and Technopark, this uh, metaphor I would like to use as a center of attraction. Uh, well, modern Technopark as a center of attraction for whom? Scientists in their labs? Not really people to live? Not really. Well, let's dwell on that. Technopark is one of main ecosystem elements of Skolkovo. Some genius people had designed it. Some other geniuses have built this Technopark. Now we have to use it somehow. Some figures. This is the biggest Technopark in Europe that will be inaugurated in autumn this fall 
and in my understanding that will become the biggest recruiting agency in Europe. We have to become the biggest headhunter in innovative environment in Europe, in Russia, or elsewhere. This is my quite ambitious goal. But, you know, as any recruiting agency, we have to think about attraction, motivation of these people, their further development, and, well, the, the preservance of these people. What is important? We are not office center and we are not trying to compete with office centers. We are not R&D Institute. We are not competing with them. And we are not really a business incubator because startups that are choosing uh, to skull cover are not really you know, early stage startups. They don't, do not need incubation. They need acceleration. And this is one of the services that we offer to them. And in order to answer the question of uh, how are we going to attract them and why, shall they be located in our technopark? We have to, to answer these questions, we have to understand who actually these people are. These are not startup leaders. There are also company leaders, not, their, not only their employers, but they have different motivations. But these are not only scientists and students of Skoltech who are also like bees are flying towards the honey that is there in Techno Park. Investors, corporations, officials, their wives, their children, everyone, citizens of the city. I believe that everyone basically 24-7 um, should dream about being a part of Techno Park, right? Why is that so? Uh, what uh, shall we offer them? What do these people want? Like, uh, they want to share their opinions with someone who's similar to them. They want comfort, they want environment, food, sleep, of course. They want respect and self-realization. All of these needs we have once formulated for ourselves and we made it uh, into, transformed it into 4C concept. Uh, it's very new idea. It's I only invented. I'm the author of this, and I invented it only seven days ago. The first C. Well, it's uh, Russian uh, letters. The first Russian C stands for events, the events that are going to happen on the platform at Technopark. Here we are competing with other event platforms. We want it to become startup village, but not open air under, but our under our cupola 24-7, 365 days a year. We would like to repeat and multiply the, multi, uh, well, multiply the success of Artplay, Flacon, for example, other platforms where very gifted and talented uh, technological entrepreneurs are meeting and gathering, like houses of new culture, as Rodin have said. Uh, well, including while talking about our project. For us, it's not a goal, but uh, a way to, you know, uh, realize our dream. So that's why the commercial part of it is not the most important for us, differently from many other platforms. As an example for me, I chose, I've chosen the Techno Park in Zurich, where about 12 events are happening daily uh, in one Techno Park. Uh, well, simultaneously on various parts of one single techno park. But we want the content to be unique and we want people to strive there. You know, after work, we want our clients to stay there to techno park. We don't want them, you know, hurrying for a date through, you know, traffic jams to the center of Moscow. We want them to stay in our techno park. Any business event, educational lectures, conferences, whatever, right after the integration or just before the integration. Second C uh, is about the network of contacts. Um, because it's all about personal contacts, right? You earn money if someone trusts you. Uh, be I don't know, be it uh, investor startup or corporate startup or whatever. And this trust is usually based on a personal communication. I don't mind online, um, you know, commerce, but we are mostly about B2B or B2G business. And one of the main values of our platform is an opportunity to personally communicate. We are competing with co-working spaces, with offices, because right now office has become not 
uh, a regular place of work, but the place for meeting, right? People are working everywhere, in the train, in the car, at home, whatever, in the park. And I believe that we're going to compete with virtual rooms where you don't need even to go out of your, your apartment, right? You can uh, communicate online. We created 25 attraction centers on the territory of techno parks in our startups. Uh, well, divided, like medical people are with medical people, uh, technic technicians with technicians, and well, those who are creating equipment for healthy life are between them. That's why we're trying to, um, you know, increase the attractiveness of uh, these uh, platforms. The third C is for service. Uh, services that we provide, well, uh, they, we already provide a lot of them, but it's number is going to exp grow exponentially and well we have a lot of different services but we don't want to you know transform in you know in the center of multifunctional center of uh, state services uh, we have oh, for example uh, well we have to diversify the fourth C it's about status uh, school cover is a prestigious thing Skolkova means quality. If you are a part of Skolkova, then you are of a high quality by default. Then you went, that means by default that you went through, you know, a lot of procedures and that really makes you more expensive. So it has to be cool to be a resident of Skolkova Techno Park. It's like the same thing as living in Palo Alto. Well, Palo Alto is, is, is cooler than San Francisco, though all of us understand that San Francisco is bigger, but, well, please, those who live in Palo Alto is... Those are way cooler than those who live in San Francisco. That's what, uh, how we understand the success, the secret of our success. That's what we are about to do. And we believe that we are going to be this honey center that will attract a lot of bees. There are people showing us some figures. I don't really get what is happening. You know. Uh, we will stay here till the very end. Alexander, if I may, uh, uh, Sergei Zuev is in a hurry. Well, let's vote. Who votes for Sergei Zuev? Uh, is he going to, to say something bad or, or what? Thank you. You know, I'm, I'm quite optimistic, but you are saying so many positive things and that, that makes me automatically uh, want to say something bad, you know, something negative. Well, it's very characteristic for a Russian intelligent people. If something goes good, then something is wrong, right? Well, he shouldn't have given me the floor then. Well, I'm interested in that. Well, but, I, you know, my question is how how the environment or a certain space can produce or initiate or contribute to a certain development processes. I mean, various processes, be it, I don't know, economic development or anything. Though the topic of our roundtable is about technologies, if I'm not mistaken, but, well, it's still very closely related. And people who answer these questions, uh, it doesn't matter be that uh, historians, uh, I don't know, uh, that answer questions why some countries are poor and some other countries are rich, or be those technologists, politicians, all of those people are looking for the groups of factors that will contribute to the, promote the development processes, right? And to achieve that, we need vast databases. We need a lot of uh, experience in technological promotion in well within in this world of the development of technologies. I mean, we have to somehow understand what is a key contributing factor to the development. Uh, for example, European model is not working at all in Asia, for example, in, in Eastern Asia, or works partially. Some factors are still remain important there, and some are, are not. They're changing. All Latin America, like the same things applied on different places, m might not work. 
In Russia, unfortunately, this research has never been done, or, well, at least if, if they have been done, there is still not enough information and data, or statistics is bad. But nevertheless, the topic of the roundtable, how, I mean, how Skolkova environment can initiate the technological breakthrough, uh, this is a good question, and we have to answer, we have to very well imagine three things, three objects, the city, the technological environment, and the technology itself. What is technology in, in, in the modern world? So the understanding of the city, I don't really understand what uh, gives Skolkova the right to be called a city. Why isn't it another Moscow district? I mean, another district with some R&D institutes. I'm sorry, but well, someone has to tell that. I'm trying to be very brief. Uh, well, it's another district where something happens or not happens. Uh, well, Russian cities could be different starting uh, you know, uh, since like 16th century, the notion of the city in Russia became quite vague. I mean, there are some centers, production, industrial centers with some districts, with some, you know, locations. And well, what is a city, basically? Well, I'm not really saying that Skolkova is, again, you know, the production or industrial center, but, well, it seems so. It seems so very much. But following the discussion at this table and following everything that I saw in Skolkova itself, um, I, well, I can say that there is a lot of talk about technoparks, about co-workings and business communication, but almost nothing is said about what, uh, but they almost not talking about people. Like, what's about people there? All right, people is the, the most important thing here. All right, Silicon Valley, it's very cool. But, well, the people who initiated Silicon Valley, they, they came there in, like, 1968. And I believe that said, tells something to the historian, right? And um, there is still some communication. And, well, the, the success of Silicon Valley is closely related to the ones who were at the very beginning at those technological breakthroughs of 60s or 70s, right? These are the people who migrated from Europe to the United States of America, not only there, by the way. And those people initiated some processes uh, trying probably even to adapt to that capital, uh, capitalistic environment. Quite, quite curious thing about the city. I mean, uh, we can't really seriously discuss city or urban city environment from the point of view of um, industrial or productional production in uh, effectiveness. For now, Skolkovo is uh, doing very well from the point of view of technologies that we are so much striving to have. Uh, well. But still, I don't think it's a city. Second, the notion of the creative environment. As a historian, uh, I, have, I believe I have a right to remind you that the first technological breakthrough of 16th century and bourgeois revolution in Holland happened because the density of clusters, the, the, the channels that unify these small land plots with, I don't know, mills or uh, whatever, some small, small pr productions, its density was as high that the cost of the transactions became very much very low and it became lower and lower and that repeated again and again during other industrial revolutions and i guess somehow it, it's even happening again right now not even from the point of view of like space organization but from the point of view of informational density well in moscow the informational density is like all right, it's higher there than in Hong Kong, but does that help Moscow somehow? We need some other density, but what density? And let's uh, us remind, uh, uh, let us remember about the first point, right, about the city. We need to, to create something, some density. And the third one, very briefly, the notion of technology. Henry Ford once said, technology is not about equipment, you know, some with some metal pieces. Technology is about my employee earning a lot of money, can, uh, being, ab being able to buy my own car of my own production, thus making 
my business productive. So uh, the city become innovative when the city really has some demand for these innovations, when the city uses these innovations and when the city brings some money to the producers of these innovations. Like, for example, vertical greenery, bio instruments of, I don't know, waste management, smart city on uh, like energy level, uh, monitoring of some municipal household on a Sputnik level, right? Um, is there anywhere in this, uh, well, let's call it a city, uh, is there a demand for this type of innovations? I don't know that. Uh, like, what uh, is the city producing uh, something that this city needs? Like, if you don't need something that you produce, what gives you the right to say that the whole world needs something that you produce, right? Like, if you don't know anything, what gives you the right to teach others? Like an ancient philosopher uh, had the right to teach his students and organize academies because he went through a ter terrible and very complicated wait there. And later, a lot of professors appeared who didn't really make any effort and started teaching people. Well, I believe that until the city uh, will, until the city uses the innovations that it produces, well the city will never be able to produce some innovations for the rest of the world. Uh, well, I will later ask Anthony to comment what I say. Our city, our micro district, I would say, our left bank is becoming a polygon for many innovation, innovative products that are born inside our company. For example, uh, non, um, for, exam for example, new innovational transport. We have been dealing with regulations, um, and if we if we deal with them, then we will uh, have unmanned uh, public transportation in Skolkovo, and that will later be transferred, I don't know, to Habarovsk, to Moscow, to bigger Moscow. So, and also these uh, innovations in terms of housing and utilities are also being implemented. Sergey, I want to tell you why. Skolkovo and Mazda City warrant and are totally justified in calling themselves cities. Because I get the same question. How can you be a city? You're only 600 hectares. It's this reason. When you innovate, you have to be small enough to demonstrate success, but large enough to have the complexity of how cities do grow. Because what we are doing, we are inventing the future at a scale that the world can then draw off and replicate many other times. You made many references to history of cities. Great cities developed in neighborhoods. There was this neighborhood that happened, that neighborhood, where ideas came. So for me, it's totally justifiable if you're going to innovate and break boundaries to be small, but to be big enough. Uh, I, I know that Anthony has to leave. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah. Just one phrase to Anthony. In school, you know, Manfred Lewy, a uh, famous urbanist, once said a wonderful phrase that Egyptians uh, couldn't construct anything but pyramids because this was how their society was structured. And everything that they built was in a way a pyramid anyway. Well, I am afraid, I am afraid that, that we might end up with another pyramid, you know? We, ha we had a pyramid planned, but instead of a pyramid, we got a matryoshka. Helena? I want to... Our pyramid appears to be in place already. It's hard to, you know, talk about practical things that I want to mention after these abstract uh, speeches. But let me be brief. After discussing what is a city, I would like to add 
I am not on either side of the argument, but I want to just add that a contemporary modern city, we say that cities become centers of um, intellectual, creative activity, and thus managing a contemporary city is about managing creativity and innovations. Well, it is perceived like that, more than uh, as you know, management of traditional infrastructures. I think today we are trying to start this great work on this soft infrastructure, shifting gradually uh, from hard infrastructure, important as it is, I mean roads, uh, streets, all those networks, but the city will you know, become a real city in the full sense when it has three elements. We talk a lot about activities, but we also should understand that it's not about activity, it's even about inspiration. How we make people inspired by a place? They are inspired only when there are various kinds of activities in place, different people in place. When the city is a mono city, be it only uh, you know, mono innovational or uh, only with uh, only industrial, only technological, um, but still, then you get a mono city. And the second thing, which is very important, uh, again, it's density that was mentioned a lot. I would say that not density, but uh, this flow. How do we make those flow? Uh, how can we direct those flows to this district of Moscow? And here, uh, events have a huge role. And uh, uh, finally, how do we shape this desire uh, of individuals to live uh, and work in Skolkovo? We cannot oblige people, you know, when we invite them to work there, it's one thing, but uh, to make them want it, it's a different thing. Unfortunately, all this activity, all this work requires not only effort, it also requires funds, investments, and sometimes we lack understanding of those things. It appears to us that we have built a building and it's enough for, for activity to spring there. We think that we made a Swiss city square and it's enough, that it, for, for, it's enough to fill it with activities. And what we are trying with baby steps, we're trying to make you know, very slowly in this district of Moscow, we are trying to initiate a lively, interesting, uh, energetic life. Uh, let me give you some examples of inspirational things. Right now, at our uh, platform there, we have uh, uh, we are hosting these uh, days of industrial designers, industrial design, uh, where Russian experts meet, foreign colleagues discuss new projects. Uh, it's again our uh, gymnasium, uh, um, Skoltech University. It's brilliant, but you know. Uh, second secondary school, uh, and for Russia it's ex it's extremely important. You see, to have a secondary school, because we lack uh, good uh, secondary education, and we are, we have this kind of a school which is friendly to pupils, friendly to their parents, and it is also an important enterprise that determines the city as much as startups as the school tech because uh, it makes people feel this ownership of the place. And finally, we want to become not only the center of scientific activities, but we want to be a cultural creative center as well. And we, uh, starting with this summer 27th of August, we will have a big jazz festival and we, we really care for, we really want it uh, to become a point of attraction for music lovers, uh, for people who love, uh, you know, cultural activities, uh, who are interested in creativity, because this juncture of uh, different people, uh, projects, ideas on a sing in a single site, this is what gives the synergy that later uh, makes cities. Thank you. Well, if everything that we plan will become reality, you know, well, construction, yes, of course, it will be all, everything will be built. Well, culturally, it is always, 
you know, two restaurants, two si two similar restaurants uh, s next to each other. They only have two different cooks, uh, chef uh, chefs, and in one of them is empty and the other is full of clients. You know, and and like in Palma de Mallorca, it's very hard to explain. One is Marisqueria de Galicia, and the other one's called Marisqueria de Galicia. They, you know, they're located on the same street, the same price. One is empty, one is full. That's it. That's how it works. So this is the uh, risk zone that we have to take into consideration and that we have to avoid. Denise, uh, what are you planting, you know? When, when will you be finishing? When will you... Let me help Denise answer this question correctly. We've just discussed what... School, what will make school cover the, the thing that people would like to live in? So at the very beginning, we were thinking about three opportunities of the organization of our city, uh, like Skolkova's techno park where people just living, Skolkova as a techno park in a broader sense of this, where people are living. And Skolkova, uh, well, people are living who are relevant for this techno park, and Skolkova's techno park, where people are living who cannot be any, any, who might not have anything to do with this techno park, and as a result, we have we have came to the second, we have come to the second model. So people now think that Skolkova, despite its uh, eccentricity or long distance from the center of the city, we want Skolkova to be fashionable and attractive place. And I believe that Dennis has an element of the response to this question. Yes, I have, and I have a, a precise visualization of this dream city. We've made a brief presentation within the five-minute reglement. Obviously, Skolkovo for us, as for specialists, is a unique project that is unique uh, because usually we get an order when architecture is already there and we have to make the landscape around it, like help to use, uh, help to, you know, solve some problems with the architecture. We as doctors try to minimize it. And here it's, well, different situation. The city is built based on a landscape and this wise planning, wise management and realization stage. Um, it inspires us. Uh, well, that's it's important for us. In September of last year, we won a contest with this concept, and the first of June, we've seen the first, you know, the first results of the first phase of Techno Park Garden. We are really thankful for the for the trust. We are very fanatic about this project, and if I may, please, I would like to demonstrate you some beautiful slides that illustrate the work that we're doing with our colleagues from Innovation Center, and well, that's how it's going to look like. The global concept is made to uh, unify all the different architecture, various zones unified into a single complex, but well, and it's done by our creative um, collective uh, headed by Kiroki Matsuro who invented this uh, rainbow concept. This element will unify the whole territory. The garden territory will include five separate zones, festival alley, central park, children park, uh, family park, tennis park, the protection zone, technical area and will start uh, techno park garden and uh, sport park. This is the visualization of Skolkovo Techno Park Garden. We are really happy with the result, and it's really, uh, we are grateful to the management, and I will repeat that forever, because quite often we see that beautiful pictures do not make it till the end. And well, active involvement into every stage, like the choosing of materials, choosing of contractors, is very important. And people are very much involved in our project, so we hope it will continue to be so. The Garden of Techno Park, like uh, show and festival alley, you see different functions that will be there. The Central Park with an integrated uh, existing Mm, uh, small lake. Uh, there is another, There is also a concept of family and children park. It's an individual thing, right? We understand where we work. We understand who is our target audience. Um, 
and the main ideology of the project. It has to be unique. And well, the uh, kids uh, park is one of my favorite parks, and it's very individual. It's very stylish. When will we finish that? Uh, well, it's a question for Anton. I believe this summer it should be opened next year, like 100%. 100% will be will be there next year, but it will be opened this year already. So visualization of sports park, and uh, I guess that one of the elements of our work is the importance of uh, various materials, components used by constructors, well, people who are actually make it real. We never actually wanted to make it the most expensive, the most, you know, beautiful. We are making it for people. We are making and building this, uh, uh, taking into account the longevity of it, right? It has to live long, it has to be beautiful, and it has to be for people. Thank you. Uh, it's a pity that Sergei Zuev is not here, because I will answer them, like, because I will answer his question about the city. We have a mayor here, Maxim. Uh, mayor can only be in the city. Dear friends, I guess we covered it all. Any questions from the audience? Any additional comments? No questions. So... I guess we the meeting is adjourned.